today was just, it was like practice. A lot of y'all ain't believe in us. Even uh, everybody asking me questions right now, which is crazy because you just got to understand our coach, Coach Prime, my dad. Everywhere he went, he was a winner. Every game, every opportunity, he took advantage of it. So a lot of y'all don't have, I'll say, the same knowledge and the same experience that he has. So how could y'all question what he's saying? He been out there, he got a gold jacket, he playing Super Bowls. A lot of people have it, you know? So I feel like now y'all understand that what he's saying is real and y'all understand what he's saying. And yes, I'm, I came from an FCS school, SWAC school, but to me it's no difference. Them hits still feel the same. I'm just excited to you know, share this moment with my dad knowing that at the end of the day, I knew I had his back. Everything he's saying, I'm going to back it up, and I'm going to make sure I do that. So I feel like my, my journey, my career, everything so far, it was just the steps to, you know, get me in this moment so I could take advantage of it. Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. The word humble. As defined as having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance. In the vein of competition in general, you will often hear people speak about being humble in victory and or defeat. Overall, I truly understand the sentiment associated with this, but at the same time, I find it to also be a conflict of interest. Let me explain. You see, for one to become great at anything, there has to be a passion and love for the pursuit and process. This passionate pursuit breeds joy, pride, and a level of confidence that can be quite overwhelming for those who haven't fallen in love with the process of becoming great at anything. As Malcolm Gladwell puts it, it takes 10,000 hours of intensive practice to achieve mastery. The outliers who have put in this type of passionate work, consistency and practice have presented themselves with the evidence that they are capable of greatness. And those 10,000 hours are embedded beliefs that they stand on. Those who don't possess this collection of evidence hours and beliefs cannot truly understand the expressions, emotions, and mindsets of those that do. The way they walk their walk, the way they talk their talk seems foreign because honestly, it actually is. If there's anybody familiar with putting in their 10,000 hours, it is prime time. Neon Dion Sanders. Excluding Pop Warner, he's had four years of high school football experience, four years of college football experience, and a 14 year Hall of Fame career in the NFL. If I do the math correctly, that's 22 years of in-game experience. He started coaching his son since their Pop Warner year. And the oldest one playing right now, Shiloh Sanders, is 23 years old. In Florida, we start youth contact no later than about the age of eight. I will assume the same for the state of Texas for this particular analysis. So let's just take those eight years off the age of the oldest active son. That's 15 years of coaching experience at least. Combine, combined with his in-game experience, that's 37 years worth of training, studying, preparing, working, and living the sport of football. Those 10,000 hours were surpassed many, many moons ago. When Coach Prime decided to leave Jackson State, which is an HBCU, and considered the minor leagues 
and compare it to his current position at a power five conference, a PWI school. He wasn't shy about it. He literally told the world and the existing players at the time that he was coming, pause, and he was bringing his own luggage. And by the way, that luggage was loose. One very important piece of that luggage was his son. Being familiar with the normal remnants of nepotism and Shadur playing the position of quarterback, he and his son were ripped apart by the media. They had the mindset that Coach Prime was being arrogant and too aggressively brash by making his son the starting quarterback immediately. Depleting damn near the entire roster and boasting about how he intended to change the culture of Colorado, they wanted Coach Prime to be humble in his approach and they wanted his team to be humble on the field of play. Remember, those who have not put in those hours don't possess your level of confidence. That's why right now I declare, fuck being humble unless it's for strategic advantage. Why would you ever show a lower estimation of yourself? Why should you ever have to dim your light for the comfort of others? You can still have respect and reverence for those around you without appearing modest. When you know who you are and you have truly put in the work to be great at something, you can hold your head high and say it with your chest. I am him or I am her. Personally, I'm not a practitioner of the Christian faith, but Coach Prime is. And Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So for those thinking he's just being arrogant and refusing to be humble, should respectfully shut the hell up. Coach Prime is simply letting his light shine and drawing other men unto him. Literally, not just young men, coaches as well. I'm a Miami Hurricane fan, but I'd be damned if I don't find myself a Shador Sanders Colorado jersey ASAP. Deuces. How you doing, sweetheart? For real? Shador Sanders from my HBCU? The one that played at Jackson last year? The one that you asked me, why would I give him the starting job? But like that, that, no, not you. I got receipts. I know who they are. Not you, baby. I just got to say it. I would never do that. Turn on the film. I tell him to turn on the film. We're gonna we're gonna continuously be questioned because we do things that has never been done. That's the way our life has presented themselves. We do things that have never been done, and that makes people uncomfortable. When you see a, a confident black man sitting up here talking his talk, walking his walk, coaching 75 percent African Americans in the locker room, that's kind of threatening. Oh, they don't like that. But guess what? We're going to consistently do what we do. Because I'm here and ain't going nowhere. And I'm about to get comfortable in a minute. I'm about to get comfortable in a minute.